What's good, the 415ers? It's your girls, Miss B and Kita. And you already know it's a good week because we have a different 50 podcast. Hi. That collab is serious right now. Do you Boom. understand? Old school meets new school. Hey. Wait, Kita, back up. She didn't tell me she had a shirt on today. Wait, wait, hold on. Ooh. Come on. Like wow. Welcome to our, you know, podcast, the 415. Thank you for having us. We've been looking forward to this. What's 415? So, the 415 is like a compilation, right? Because okay. my birthday is April 1st, okay. and I'm April 15th, so it's like four. Hey. Four, ah. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. The I love time, it. The whole time, I thought it was like the area code for everybody. Georgia. Yeah, everybody. <laughs> Yeah, and it's crazy because... Is that a Georgia area code? No, it's San Francisco. It's San Francisco. Uh, mm-hmm. So we have a lot of uh, traction from San Francisco, so shout out to y'all. Shout there. out. Uh, West Coast. Okay. West Coast. You know. Right. I, hand I was like, wait, I forgot where I was. I right? know, right? I'm Don't be putting up no gang signs. I'm saying I'm on the blue couch right now. I got I no problem. No, no gang signs. No Sunday. <laughs> None of that. Not on None this just Sunday, and I just want to check. No. None of that. No. So, like... The topic, because this is episode, what was he at, Kita? 76. Girl. All right. Congratulations. Wait, Thank you. Good Lord. Awesome. So episode 76. 30 meets 50. Yep. Yes. The Black Don't, the Black don't Crack, crack edition. Yep. <laughs> the Black Don't Crack edition. That's Come all on I'm now. Who yeah. 50? On what count? I'm right. 52. 52. Stop it. 52. Yes, ma'am. Listen, I was in the um, mall yesterday. No, I went to, you know, I went to retirement class yesterday. Retirement plan. I saw that. Five hours. Your, yes. On your I don't know what I was media. And you needed to be there. Yep. I was overloaded. I told Keith, my mom was like this. I told y'all this morning. Like, <laughs> so you came and right. said, look, that's how my mind looked. Just like that. So, like, um, I went, I was going to the restaurant or whatever because I needed a break. And this lady was like, yeah, why are you here? She was like, signing everybody in. And she's like, you, you think you're here too early? Like, maybe you want to come back in a couple of years? And I was like, okay. That looks a good. couple of years? Back, girl, bye. Right. So, no. then, so then uh, I told her, I think I'm 36. She's like, exactly. Right. Exactly. you 36. Yes. I'm yeah. 36. She's like, oh, okay, then, yeah, maybe you shouldn't be here. <laughs> right. Right. You, this Terrible. is stuff you need to start thinking exactly. about now. Or sooner even, let, let yeah. the truth be told, or sooner. I got a long-term disability policy in my mid-20s. Mm. that I still have because anything can happen at any time and I've seen it we've seen it oh, with yeah. with classmates of ours Donna and I met in college we went to Hampton oh H yeah H U we went to Hampton together I wish I went to H U yes you do yes you do and that's where we met um third going on well, we graduated in 89, Ooh. which was... Ooh, 30, we started there in 85, so what's that, 34? Girl, we're number one years old when y'all started. Don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. <laughs> yep, don't do that. Look, I'm yep. down, not today, no. <laughs> so, so, yeah. <laughs> That's real. So, so like, yeah, for real. maybe I can ask you this. So, being on campus then, how much different? Now that social media is a thing, mm. like, what does the campus look like to you? It, it, does it still carry that same historic feel from when you were there? You know, I think it's different. Mm. I think it's different. I mean, yeah. our okay, so our class is very close, and so we're, it's always this feeling of love and history. But the campus itself, of course, you know, they have new buildings from when we were there, and all these things I wish we would have had, like that damn library, <laughs> but. <laughs> It's just, it's different. It's a different time because the students are different. The administration is different. Mm -hmm. They're dealing with different things. So it's still a lot of like nostalgic love for me, Mm -hmm. but it is very different. And I'm glad we were there when we were there. I wouldn't want to be there now. Now, Got it. I wouldn't want to, I mean, not to say that we didn't have our own challenges and things of that nature. That definitely was happening when we were there. This was the 80s. 85 to 89, there were a lot of things going on in the world. Remember, we had Shantytown for apartheid. This was prior to Nelson Mm -hmm. Mandela being 
um, released from right. from um, prison and stuff like that. So we had all of those kinds of issues going on. There were drugs on campus. There were sexual assaults and things like that that did happen on campus. So it's not as though a lot of the same social issues weren't happening, but it seems like everything now is like on 10, right. given mm. the social media, right. given the way kids were or have been brought up, right. much different than how we were brought up. Um, I mean, even the music, yeah. think about it, the music, music is, is different. different. Mm. Yeah. I mean, everything is just different. So, yeah. Y'all had Michael Jackson. Is he, I, I have a, we had Michael like, Jackson, we had Prince, Biggie, right. Pop. Oh, hey. oh, 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 that's way after that's that. That's after, though, right? that was You're 90s. Right. Oh, we talking about EPMD. Yeah. yeah. All of them. Yeah. yeah. Virginia Beach Party. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, I had a Virginia Beach Party. Oh, yeah. It used to be um, Labor Day weekend at Virginia Beach. It was yes, I've seen that. See, I remember that. Okay. Those I remember those like college weekend, which they're bringing it back, right? Because of something in the water. Oh, I can't wait to go back. But anyway, <laughs> like I remember, like I didn't, go, I didn't, I didn't go to college, so I didn't graduate from HBCUs. But because I was from Virginia, I right. had Hampton and North State. Right. But right. you know, even by walking on the campus, you felt like it was a sacred ground. To right. me, it felt right. sacred. And like, that's it how it like, felt to us as well. Oh. It, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Even as a little girl, and I would go to like the the homecoming games. I was like, "Oh, this is like the best thing ever in life." <laughs> so much. It blackness. was. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It was. It was. My whole family went to um, HBCUs. My mom. Wow who I, we were talking earlier off camera, my mom is from Virginia. She went to St. Paul's, which sadly is no longer in existence. Mm -hmm. That was an HBCU. My father went to Winston-Salem State. My sister, who's younger than me, who just this morning came home from her homecoming from down to Shaw University. Mm -hmm. And then I went to Hampton and our homecoming is next weekend. Unfortunately, Donna and I will not we be there this be there. year, which mm -hmm. sucks, but, you know. But we did have the most amazing 30th, class reunion back in may may it was amazing like Crazy. amazing yeah that's all i can say it's amazing Dang, but yeah. enough about that we need to talk about some real okay. real world stuff for y'all <laughs> so, I, mean, I, I wanted to go down to the hbcu my dad was like no you're gonna go to the little community college first and you're gonna go over upstate somewhere to the city you're gonna go to city or state school that's where you're going i'm like oh, black people but you went to college and that's all that matters What's dude up? I so what's what's something that you guys would like to know or have our view on um given where you are in life now as opposed to where we are okay. what's something you would like to know so okay let's piggyback, let's piggyback okay, so, your episode. <laughs> so okay um i didn't listen to when i listened to one of you guys episodes the other day and you all talked about self-awareness what i'm hitting now being self-aware about, like if <clears throat> I was telling uh, Miss B last night, when you're coming into a situation, right, and you, it's a you know negative energy or the type of energy that, the type of energy that's going on around it, do I want to give myself the time to have to, to take on this energy or do I want to in, involve myself? You know, like, do I want to... Do you want to participate? Right. Do I want to participate in it? Like I have the choice to participate in this dumb crap or right. I can just walk away. Right. And and at before I would just participate in it because I thought that's something I had to do because I had to defend myself. Or right. I had to I had to prove something to somebody. But now I'm like, you know what? I don't have to take in, I don't have to deal with this crap. I'm done. I'm gonna walk away. It's whatever. You don't have to explain yourself to people who don't know you or know what you've been through. Exactly. Period. And mm -hmm. I'm a big believer in you have to meet people where they are and mm -hmm. sometimes you leave them there. Mm -hmm. That's it. You are in control of you. You're not in control of others. You're not in control of other people's intentions. Um, so you have really have to worry about you. So in those times when you do find yourself in a situation, you have to step back and say, what, are, you know, like, uh, I participated in that when I really didn't want to. Mm -hmm. So it's a learning lesson because sometimes we get caught up. You know, it's right. life or somebody could trigger something and you end up in something that you necessarily didn't want to be in, but you always have the luxury of removing yourself. Mm -hmm. right. Another, another part of self-awareness that's really important. And I did, I'm me personally, I did some work on this is how you occur to other people. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the other part of self-awareness that a lot of people 
either don't do the work on or don't think about is how am I occurring to someone else? Because maybe you're getting something from them because of the way you come, you are coming across to them. And it's a, you got to be grown to get ready for that. Right. You really do. You have to be grown to, sit, to, to take a step back and say, wait a minute, what am I doing here? That when I, when I'm coming across that, this is what I, is, is there something that I'm doing? Right. There's nothing wrong with looking at yourself right. and realizing how you are occurring to other people. Mm. And that's a big step because a lot of people don't do that. Mm. Like you have to, like you said, you have to see how you approach people because it's a give and a take. And if you're giving off something that making people come at you a certain way, you have to kind of look at that and analyze it. And you, and, and and you may work. have been fine. So mm-hmm. it could have been that person, but it's, a, it's worth taking a look at yourself and saying, I probably could have handled that better. Now, right. I've been married before. Leslie hasn't. And I tell her all the time, having been married before, and coming from a learned environment of my parents and their marriage and probably taking some of that crap into their marriage that had no, nothing to do with me, my ex-husband or our situation, I've learned from that mm-hmm. because, you know, it's learned behavior. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes we have to challenge that and opt out of that. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's everything. It's the people you hang with. It's your family. It's your friends. It's your work. That becomes a part of you. Right. And there's parts right. of all of that that aren't necessarily good. And right. so you have to take on those things that are more positive than negative. I mean, we all have work to do on ourselves every day, every day. That part about who you surround yourself with is the truth. You hear it when you're younger, and it is the truth even when you get older. Um, I made a conscious effort many years ago and changed um, who I spent a lot of my time around and it benefited mm-hmm. me in a, in a very tremendous way in how I approached my career and how I approached other things in life, like buying property and things like that because of who I was surrounding myself right. with, because mm-hmm. I was like sitting back and watching these people who were my age. These were peers, my age, a year older, maybe even a little bit younger, like looking at the moves they were making. And, um, mm-hmm. I was like, wait a minute, if she can do that, I can do that too. Right. Or if they can right. do that, I can do it. Like what is stopping me? The only thing stopping me was me. Mm-hmm. You know? That's my problem. Yeah. And you know, like Miss B and I have had some conversations to the side where I've, you know, said to her, I'm like, there's no reason you can't do X, Y, and Z mm-hmm. or, you know, there's, why not? Think about it now. Do it now. And don't yeah. listen to the dream killers because, you know, you always mm-hmm. got the dream snatchers. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, no. Or people who pro- project their fears on right. you. Right. right. And, I'm, and, I'm, and I've been, you know, guilty of doing that. I told you, I, I, I never forget. There's a job I should have taken. Mm-hmm. I allowed my father, who is of a very different generation, a oh lot older. Talk me out of it. Oh my goodness, you're talking fun right and now. And like to this day, it, it as you can see, it still bothers the shit out of me. Mm-hmm. So I use that as a catalyst to be like, never again. Mm-hmm. And and he wasn't doing it as a way of being mean or malicious because he didn't know what he didn't know. Fear. Right? It was, it was his, his fears, fear. and I allowed that to be my fear. So. And sometimes people don't want you to rise above the station in life that they're at, whereas or something they're not comfortable right. with. Right. You know. And sometimes they don't, they, a lot of times they don't do it maliciously, but that's all they know. Mm-hmm. But you can't allow that to jump onto you. You know, Their limitations I mean? yeah. can't be your limitations. Right. Because right. So, it's a big world and there's a lot right. of things to do. And you know what? When you go out there and you do things and you make mistakes, because I'm going to tell you, I lived away from home a lot of times. And if some of the shit that I've been through, <laughs> if my family knew, they'd be like, what the hell? But that's okay. <laughs> Because it was it was for me, and this is right. what I say, especially as grown black women. You make a choice, you ride with that choice, mm-hmm. you rise or you fall. If you fall, learn the lesson, get up and keep it pushing. It's okay. Right. So why can't I do that? Because when I fall, I break down and I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't I didn't do what I was supposed to do. One, two, three, four, five. Because you have to learn to forgive yourself. Exactly. It's and not you got, the I end mean, of the and, world. And have a pity party for a minute. You can't live there. Okay, what's the right. minute? Though? Like literally a minute, or like not more than a t- two weeks. I, like. You know what? I have been in situations where, like, for weeks, I'm like, okay. I can't. But every week I say I can't, I'm doing a little bit more, and I'm coming out of it. Okay. Because mm-hmm. at, some time, at some point, you're going to be like, I cannot be sitting around here worried about 
You had to see me yesterday. That's what Keita. That that part right there. Yesterday, I told you my mom that's was like not, that. Yeah, you can't. You can't. You can't live there, right? What you say before? You, you cannot live, live there. there. You're not all. gonna grow. No. Something happened. It didn't turn out the way it was supposed to. Yeah. And we still go through Suck it right it now. And keep moving. We still go through it right now. Yeah. All the time. Mm-hmm. But yeah. you know what? It's like. What did I say just yesterday? I said I refuse. I cannot give no energy this week mm-hmm. to something that. I had an accident. I had a car accident. Somebody hit me from behind. Everybody's like, oh, you should sue. I ain't got no time to be running around here behind some half-ass ambulance chaser when I feel fine and my car can get fixed. I don't have that. I can't. I'm not mad. I'm not upset. I didn't get hurt. The person didn't get hurt. Next. Yeah. Because yeah, there's do. other things that you need to be prepared for that are, that are going to exactly. start coming at you in life. Mm. So if you can't get it together now and rise above whatever, I mean, because... Think about it this way. A year from now, you're going to look back on the situation and be annoyed that you even spent the amount of energy that you did worrying about it, being pissed off about it, because in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter. There's bigger things in life that are going to come at you. Donna and I have both dealt with, both of my parents are now deceased. I've dealt with illness, job loss, um, pretty much at the same time of having to take care of of things that I never thought I would ever have to take care of Amen. because Preach I didn't, it. I didn't, you know, I didn't want to think about it. You know, you think your parents or what have you are going to be here forever. They're not. Mm-hmm. And you need to be prepared for things like that. So get yourself up out of whatever it is that's bothering you now. Cause bigger things are going to oh, come. But it, it, now, now, I'm stuck in like, and I, I talked to Keita about this yesterday. I think like all of the things that is going on in my brain, it's like, how can I put it? I'd be okay for now, right? And then one thing will go wrong, but then all the 50 million other things that went wrong before all come back because of this one thing. So it's like re-going through like... You have to manage that, though. You have yeah, to you have to learn that. how to forgive yourself. It's and, like, and you why does that happen, though? Like, but why you have it... to think, how can you manage that? Like, sometimes I write stuff down. Yeah. Because when I write it down and I look at it and I'll be like, well, you know, I pretty much took care of that one. So, all right, you know, yeah. you got to you gotta trick your mind or whatever it is to see mm-hmm. the good and not focus on all the bad. Because, mm-hmm. you know, you did X, Y, and Z. Okay, A, B, I need to work on that. But once you know that's done, okay, so I'm here. You got to figure out what works for you. you so can't, <laughs> Don't take on the stuff from the past because we all got to do that. Right. I, was, I was telling um, I was telling Ms. B yesterday, I was like, you know, two weeks, for two, the past two weeks now, I've been having a battle with myself only because I feel like I'm now shifting into another part of my life and now I have to I have to deal with I I've always swept under the rug okay. and I had to so for the past two weeks I was like I was literally around here like okay Akita, what's going on and it was it was coming into my head I was like okay you have to stop doing this if you want to get here you got to stop being like this if you want to get here and how you're going to deal with it like you really I had to really concentrate and say okay I have to and it was uncomfortable for me because I've never been in that space before and I had to deal with it so now I'm in uncharted territory that I've never been in so it's like oh child it's uncomfortable I want to fight I don't but like see, this that's what you're right where you're supposed to be because change right. only comes you're right where you're, when you're to uncomfortable be. that's the only right. time you're right where you're supposed to be so anytime you're feeling uncomfortable and you're like, I don't like how this feels, I don't know what I'm doing, you're right where you're supposed to be. And let me say this, never, ever, ever, especially if you have insurance, never, ever, ever think that it's crazy to go get some counseling. You ain't had to right. do it forever. Right. Don't right. so talk to somebody who is completely removed from you emotionally. Yeah. Not because your, your friends can only do but so much. Right. Your family can only do but so much. They know your too church much. can only do but so much. Right. 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 You go to a therapist, somebody, and you know, you, you it doesn't necessarily have to be someone who looks like you. I I, I, I say this them. all the time. I, I say this black one. Oh. all the time that it it doesn't necessarily have to be someone that looks like you. But don't mm-hmm. you feel like they they need to kind of be like you to know like understand like the issues that we battle in our community. I'm going to say this. I thought that before. Okay. And then I went to some white woman who said something to me. And I was like, well, damn, girl, how you know that? <laughs> okay? Okay, okay. She said she listened to what I said. And she said something that I couldn't deny. Mm. If you go back and listen to our episode, um, the first episode we did um, over the summer with our classmate, Victoria, mm. she talked about how when she was 
in a very fragile state in her life, how um, a white woman told her, look, I know you have this superwoman complex and all this other stuff that you have to deal with, but if you don't get on this medication, you gonna crash yep. and burn. So that sounds like you know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's true. Cause I, I literally slept in bed. I, I laid in bed yesterday because the two weeks it drained me so it's drained me so much mentally that I was in bed from yes, I didn't get out of bed yesterday until two o'clock. Yeah, and that's something you gotta look at because you you you're wasting time and you're wasting energy too. It takes a lot of energy to be yeah, in that mindset. To be in that mindset. It takes a lot of energy. And that energy could have been expended somewhere else doing something more for you. But you got that off. Even, got that even, off. But even though it was, to me, to me, it was a good thing because it uh -huh. was something I needed to recognize and I needed to identify and say, okay, what's your plan of action? What you plan on doing about it? How are you going to move forward in life? Da -da 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 -da. The question is, is how do you feel today? Oh, I'm fine today. Oh, today. And good. then, then that's what, then hey, that's what your body needed. That's what your mind needed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm fine today too. <laughs> and y'all saw me laugh. Like I even like, I don't know this girl. She needs to go to love. Try again. Yeah. Like but I mean, we, and don't. Uh, we're not sitting here like we're Oprah and on high or anything. We all go battle and go through this, you know, and have hard times and hard situations. But you've got to be resilient. Mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes you just have to is, decide. Yes. that I'm going to do this. It's going to be hard. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to kick and scream, but you have to decide, this is what I'm going to do. I had to, get, I had to give myself permission to go through the emotions. That was yeah, another thing. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, this is a process. You're going to just ride the wave and you're going to be fine. Just ride the wave. You're going to be absolutely okay. Just let it happen. So I, that's what I had to do last week. For me, I just need to get rid of the, um, what do you call it? The, the checklist. Okay, so I did this today. Okay, I did this today. Like everything in my life, it has to be like in order. And when it's not in order, that's when you feel out of control. Oh my goodness. And it's like, why do I need things to be this way when that's not life? But that's how you process it. So you have to try, you have to figure out ways in which you can manage that. Mm -hmm. that and I'm the total opposite. And you yeah. know what? Seeing a therapist could very well help you with right. that. Right. And I ain't afraid of the therapist because we, like, when it was like mental, you know, um, awareness month, we were talking about that. Like a lot of people, like, Say, oh my gosh, I'm not going to no shrink. I ain't doing this. It's just like, you know what? You walking around with problems from like, what you said, 19 when? <laughs> 76. Yeah, right. that's, our, that's our number. She's like, you walking around with problems from 1976 that you ain't fixed. And you trying to move from relationship to relationship and wondering why it's not working and it's on you. That's what you come across with online dating. Oh. Or a I mean, since we there. Uh, yeah. Since so we, did you, let's did roll you right over there. <laughs> Let's roll right into that one. That's a good thing. Wait. Did you, did you, did you hear? Oh, we listened. I was at work like, ooh. Hot mess. Oh, yeah. Hot mess. Mm -hmm. She yeah. said, she said, um, I seen red flags in the bio. I said, well, damn. Why oh, you see red flags <laughs> in the bio? Shit. It's the truth. <laughs> Mine was always the picture. Mm. A lot of, you know, and and we're looking at men who are a little older of course than what you would be looking at mm -hmm. and when you're still trying to dress like you're 25 oh, no. i have a problem with mm -hmm. that really? or like, having on no shirt boy where are your clothes at <laughs> why are you still dressed like you're 28 you know and oh my gosh. why do you put up some of these pictures that don't really show what you look like or like are old well, that could that could mean the same thing for women too, because I've seen women who are like, you know, because yeah, y'all about me my mom's age, yeah, no, yeah, but yeah. but but she don't try to dress like she eighteen. Right. She right. dressed like no, her the age. women are not exempt from it either. The right. women are not no. exempt from it. I no. mean, we wasn't looking at women, so we you know, right, they yeah. They're but not you know, there are red flags. Like, what you trying? What life? Who are you trying to prove something right. to? Right. Yeah, because like it's weird. Because sometimes women fall in. I was like, um, I, I got male on mine, so why are women like trickling in? That, that was a weird one. Yeah, that's why I, was like, I don't like weird. Uh, that's why I selected men. Well, yeah, I, I I have no answer for that. I have no answer for that. No. But what I do have an answer. What I do have to. <laughs> <laughs> She having a whole party downstairs. Sure wow, that's nice. I can't hear it. 
That's why I can't say yeah. that. Yeah. That's one of the reasons why. So, um, yeah, so 415 ers if you hear background noise, motorcycles, yeah. Um, where am I living room? We have that <laughs> issue, too, when we record yeah. as well. Because oh we record gosh. in, like, downtown Newark. So oh, you already yeah. know. So we get a lot of noise. Mm-hmm. So she turned on the bass now? Yeah. Maybe she's mad because she want to be in this conversation. And Maybe. She not, I don't know. Maybe. But she, no, yeah, whatever. whatever. But, yeah, but, on, but dating, uh, you still... Look, it don't get easier. If a man hasn't dealt with his issues in his 30s, chances are he ain't dealt with them in his 50s. Right. So I don't have anything positive to say when you get older. <laughs> but if there's somebody you feel like you want to work with, then work with them. Right. If, if there's somebody you feel like this could be worthwhile, then work with them. Because hmm. I look back at some situations I had been in been like, well, maybe I should have stuck it in. Gave that one an. Nah. And then and then and I turn around and say, yeah, no. Because then you remember that one thing, you're like, nah, nah, nah. And nah, then nah. it's like, no, nah, not really. Because I mean, <laughs> and 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 we aren't perfect either. We have a lot of crap with us too. But it seems like that was not for me personally. It didn't bear any real good fruit. And, and I know people who've met people online and have gotten married. Right. I, mm-hmm. I really do. I know people who've done it. I think for me, it's like social media messed everything up, you know, cause I was living my life really good. I was having a good time in my twenties, but when I got on social media and I started seeing other people, maybe it's not true because a lot of people put up some fake stuff, but it's like every other day, somebody got engaged, somebody got married, somebody found a booth, somebody got this, somebody did that. And then you over here like, well, dang, what am I doing? Gets, it gets in your head. Yes. It it, you start mm-hmm. feeling that like, dang, I'm not on the timeline. I'm 36. But I got all this, like, I look good on paper. But the thing that's missing is a companion. But what you have to look at is like people you know who post all these beautiful things. And I'm like, well, she just hung up the phone talking about how right. she's going to stab that nigga. Right. So like, what? You know what I'm saying? So that part. And the other thing is, is are you, can you be happy with yourself? Because if you're looking for happiness in someone else you're Forget not it. going to find it no. they, that is not their responsibility no. to bring happiness into your life the happiness needs to already wow. be there yeah. it's another well, thing for them to enhance it but the happiness already needs to be there me i'm good i, I honest to god i am good your girls had a good year i'm in i'm having a rough month but that's because i'm under renovation yes. and renovations are not fun however I've had a really good year, and I can honestly say for the first time in a long time, I am happy and content with my life. I have gotten past the, you know, the, um, the, the, the change and the understanding of what life is once both of your parents are gone, because mm-hmm. that is huge, and that's a lot. I've gotten to the next phase of that, I feel. Um, and, the, and the holidays are coming, and the holidays are hard, you know, since they're gone, so I, but I think I'll probably deal with the holidays a little bit better this time mm-hmm. around than I have in the past. I'm actually happy, and I'm not looking for someone else to bring happiness to me, to, to fill something. Right. It's filled. Mm-hmm. Now, you want to enhance it? We, we, work for that. we ain't looking for no bullshit. Yeah. Okay. I'm not looking that. for any bullshit, and okay. I'm not looking to, and I'm not looking to save you or rescue you. Remember Project. when it, when remember mm-hmm. when it used to be Captain Save a Ho? That was <laughs> yeah. in the 90s. Now yeah. it's now it's women want to save all these men out here. I know. Yeah, no, not, there was not. no saving in my parents' marriage. They were on the same page. I'm not here for that. Mm-hmm. And I wish I was. I, I told Miss V yesterday. I was actually having a conversation with some with someone with the guy and it was telling me how, you know, they're not ready for a relationship right now because they are trying to heal themselves, mm-hmm. heal himself. And when I was like, I never heard a man say that. And, and for, and for a man to right say right that, right? when a man say that, I'm like, yo, I have nothing but respect for you because the, the because you trying to heal yourself you from whatever trauma and setbacks you had, yo, you got nothing but my respect, brother. Well, it, it helps that you have more, men, black men, Mm -hmm. um, who are in the public eye talking about that these days. That is, that's been a lot more helpful for people to see that we're all, we're all damaged to some degree. Mm -hmm. What you going to do about it? Right. What are you going to do about it? Like what, or do you, or, uh, and how do you want to go about in the world? Do you want to keep hurting everybody Mm. because you were hurt? 
and you just want to continue to lash out for the rest of your life, you're going to be miserable. Hmm. Why do you want to be miserable? Life, exactly. life should be about living happiness. It's not all peaches and cream, but, and, and well, as, it could be peaches and cream. right. It's not we all, all peaches and cream, but it's in the Valley where you grow. Cause you can't, Ooh. and I have told people you, I am really enjoying this high moment in my life because I grew in those valleys that I was in. She said mm-hmm. it's in the valley when you grow. That is, right. Iyanla said that. Iyanla like wrote time. that book. Iyanla <laughs> wrote that book, Value in the Valley. Because some, that people, some people don't think that they can grow in dark places. <laughs> I don't know. It'd be it the thing. Like they don't drowning. think it's a like, yeah, yeah. weed in the light. You gotta it gotta be okay. <laughs> and you know we got it's medicinal now, so right, what? Right. okay. <laughs> Although some people really need hey, to off. Hey, right. put I'm a red saying. put a red light on it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Hey. Man. <laughs> the red light it's back in the best. day used to be at the house party. Oh, Remember, like the, the, base, the basement party. Put that red light on when the slow song was on. Yeah. You got it. Grinding up against some Negro on the wall and stuff. Yeah. Sweaty, yeah. And yeah. All sweaty and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that was Those were basement boo. parties <laughs> in the 80s. That's funny. So question. So what about when you're the type to have to fix everybody around your family? friends like they all come to you for everything girl oh this broke down oh this happened oh this is a thing now you got friends over here talking about something can i borrow 500 no you cannot so good luck to you did you deal with that in your 30s or before yeah are you dealing with it now and if you did how you know i'm gonna say like in my i've always had friends that felt like i don't know i had this trough of money somewhere um and they would from time to time asked me and I have lent some friends money but I have always been very good at lending people money I know I would get it back from right I might have had one or two incidences with that and then that was a wrap but like now no like now but if I see if I see one of my girls in something and I know they just need it till a minute I will offer it up a lot of times they won't take it but I don't really have those kind of friendships where we need to borrow money from each other because we're all doing what we're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying things don't happen. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not saying that doesn't happen, but I'm blessed that that's not the issue right now. Mm -hmm. In the past couple of years, I have lent large sums of money to two friends. I have gotten it back and I gave a cousin um, a large sum of money and she offered to pay it back and I didn't take it back from her. I said, no, just, you don't have to pay me back because she was in the situation where she was furloughed Mm -hmm. and you know, I'm like, you, you, even though, even with that, you still playing catch up. So Mm -hmm. don't worry about it. And I know she would give it back to me. Right. You know, but I say all that to say they're coming to you because they see you got your shit together. But, but here's what, here's where you, you have to, there's gotta be a hard line and a feeling that people know not to come to you. People don't come to me with some bullshit because they know I'm going to say no. So you have to now stop feeling like it's your responsibility to take care of people. So when they come to you, you'd be like, no. no. Got to learn how to say no. No. And, and if, they get, if they letters. get mad at you, so what? That's less stress you got to deal with. And probably one less person. Right. Mm. And don't, you're not the, you're not going to be without family. You're not going to be without friends. You're going to be without mooches. Mm. And sometimes mooches are in your family. Mooches are some of your old friends that have been there for forever, what have you. No. Just tell people, no. This, my, I worked for this money. If I want to give it to you, that's one thing. But you coming to me and asking me for what? $500 for what? Because of some bullshit you did or you didn't take care of, that's not my responsibility to help you out of that. You got a medical issue that came up out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe we can talk or something, but just because your phone got cut off, that's not my problem. I had a friend ask me, this goes back a couple of years, I had a friend ask me if she could borrow $500 for me because y'all ready? Her boyfriend who had just moved in with her didn't know how these bills was going to fall. No, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Blank yeah. Man. Boom. And you know, I, I was, she was like, hello? Because I was sitting here like, I know this B. <laughs> <didn't you?" laughs> 
Yeah, no, that's gonna be that's gonna be a no. Let's a let's no. take a step back. Let's, let's, Let's take a step back and look at the vernacular used. She didn't, he didn't know how these bills were going to fall. She had to lean in on that though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm confused my darn self. Right? <laughs> like, I ain't going, I ain't going to give y'all some background information. That what about a nigga was living at home? Right. Mm. <laughs> you know, like bills come every month. There's people who really don't get that. All I'm saying is, learn to say no. I didn't give a damn if she ain't never talked to me again, but she talks to me now all the time. Right. All I'm saying is, I can say no and I can sleep at night and that's it. My mother always said, or no, my father, you don't lend no money that you can't live without getting back. Mm -hmm. Right, right, yeah. right, mm -hmm. if right. You got, if you feel right. like if I don't get this money back, X is going to happen, you don't lend then, that then money. you don't lend that money. And if you lend it away, like I've given money to people and, and I've said to myself, if I don't get it back, I'll be good. But luckily, I've gotten it back. Right. But it was that, you know, thought process was like, well, I could, you know, I'm good. So they can have that if I don't get it back. Right. You're not, you're not, you're responsible for yourself. Exactly. Other people are responsible for themselves. If they're at X age mm -hmm. and still can't pay their monthly bills, or then you know what? Get out here and drive Uber. I mean, get a job. Get two jobs. Domino's Pizza still delivers. Hello. You know, go out here and get another job. That's I'm going, I, and and with that, I'm going to go book this next vacation. Right. Because I can. Yeah, right. now nah, I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to hit the Caribbean. I'm going on this cruise. I can't. I can't but no, it's, I'm going away. It's so bad because, you know, sometimes I stop doing what I want to do because. Girl, people bye, are bye. Away. Hell no. I I'm wish. not going to post where I'm no. at. I wish. I'm what? not going to post this because. What? No. Oh, honey, I'm me. getting ready to be fabulous up in this piece. You didn't invite what? me. Why you didn't because tell me about that? Because you don't have any fucking money. That's why you weren't invited. And how about and I don't want you to fucking go? Right. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. How about because what you don't have mistake? any money? <laughs> Let me tell you something. When you get over, this happened over forty. I got to the point where there's some people that like I'll I can say, yo, I'm going on X. Okay. How? Yes. How Miss B and I met right. was on a trip. This year. Okay, this year. We've been with each other for a while. Yes. We met on a trip earlier this year. It was only back in April. Hey, good month. Oh, that's a trip she was supposed to go meet something in the water in? Oh, okay. You're right. Right. <laughs> Flashback. Flashback. Yeah. The first time I, right, the first time I went on that trip was like nine years ago. Um, and I went by myself. Because I had asked a few people and they were hemming and hawing and I was just like, enough. I'm going on this trip. I can pay for it. I can have my own room, whatever. And and if I gotta eat tuna fish sandwiches for the next month at work when I come home, that's on me. That's whatever. Right. So I go to say, if you if there are things that you wanna do and you lending money to somebody else is gonna prevent you from doing it, mm. fuck them. <laughs> Don't do that. Mm -hmm. Don't not post or what if you want to don't hide your don't joy, hide your joy mm -hmm. and what you've been able to do put it out do. there right mm -hmm. hell know? they they putting their stuff out there and they need right. having their own life okay that's exactly. why i've been on my story lately <laughs> mm -mm. no sorry don't let nobody dull your shine it's no. as simple as that no mm -hmm. you work every day you get up every time. day we all do. We get up every day. Go we to go work. to work. We do what we're supposed to do. We, we deal put, with the bus. Right? We did we we put our savings away. Have your listen, listen, if you're not doing it now, I'm telling you, get on your investments. Make sure your insurance stuff is in order. You know, Keita, I believe you have a, a, a child. Make mm -hmm. sure something happens, the child, you know will be taken care of. By but who you want them by to be who taken you want, care of. Right? You need a will, honey. I already, I got most of that in place. Good. Like, you got a will? Good. Not yet. I'm going to give you I mean, I, I, no, I have not written will yet. Hmm. You need a will. Yep. Because it's crazy. Like, you know, lately it's been younger people passing. So it's like, yeah. you need that. I grew up, my parents are older. So I always grew up with that mindset of when you walk out the door in the morning, we hope we all walk back in. Right. And that was what, 40, 50 years ago. You see what it is now. Mm -hmm. So we really have to be mindful yeah, of that. It's true. Like my parents, I, I always joke with people like I was living in North Carolina for a lot of years. My mother calls me up one day. I hadn't even had my damn coffee, okay? Mm. 
Like I haven't had none today because you I'm don't sorry. have a coffee maker. I know coffee. I don't have a coffee maker. I don't know how to make coffee. Okay. And she was like, I just want you to know me and your dad just came back from the funeral home, honey. The funerals is all paid for. I was like, can I get a cup of coffee? But now I have to think about it. I'm home. I'm here with them. They did you such a service. Right. I don't have nothing to oh, worry about. My God forbid yeah. something happened. All I got to do is make one, maybe two phone calls and maybe come out my pocket $200 wow. because they took care of that. Mm-hmm. And people was like, oh, I don't, I don't want to talk about. My mother taught me straight up. Yeah, we live, we die. Yep. Ain't nobody, you know anybody. You need die? to, you need to know Except where all White, your parents' stuff is. Kids, but. And not only do you need to know where your parents' stuff is, you need to know if they have nothing because it's gonna come down to you. Right. My sister and I were so fortunate. Our mother, our father had passed away some years earlier, but my our mother's stuff was in order. Her house was in mm. order. So by the time it was all said and done and over with we didn't have to come out of our pockets for anything plus we sold the house paid off a reverse mortgage there was money left over from that plus we get checks every quarter Mm -hmm. from what she left behind that's real okay and it's like a lot of black families don't have that a lot and a lot do and a lot do Mm -hmm. because this is something that we don't want to talk about right you need to sit your parents down figure out okay where's this 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 or this let there be a stroke and you don't have power of attorney to get to their bank account to help pay or defray costs. That's coming mm-hmm. out of your pocket. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, can, I can't tell you how many people I know now who are dealing with ill parents mm-hmm. who were not properly, uh, who did not have um, uh, uh, Medicaid or Medicare or that's all they have, did not have any supplemental insurance or you know what have you, didn't have any insurance policies, how much they you talk about we are that sandwich generation, you know, Donna and I are generation X because we still have friends. We have some friends who've got kids who graduated college, some friends who've got kids who are still in grade school. Plus they got older parents. We're sandwiched in between having to take care of mm-hmm. both sides. And it's not easy. It's not easy. I mean, I've moved back home to help with my parents and I mean, I got thrust right back into it, but mm-hmm. I am on all their paperwork. I have, I'm on all their bank accounts. Right. I have the same rights as them, so if something happens, I can go in. I have power of attorney if something should happen. Um, what their doc, I'm their contact. You don't call them, you call me. Mm-hmm. I mean, and it's a lot. It's a lot. I don't enjoy it, but it's a lot. It's something that has to be done. Right. right. And I don't have, so I don't have those issues of, oh, well, I can't talk to you. No, you can talk to me, you know, because when you have to go through the process of, getting this information to this person and yeah. how do I know that you're the daughter and because you because you have that other set of family mm-hmm. who always got their hands out for something that don't have a damn thing to do with them mm-hmm. so you know it's a lot and you need to try to offset that mm-hmm. so even are you an only child no okay so if you guys are not only children no. maybe you're not the chosen one by your parents but somebody needs but to I'm be. the oldest so it's gonna fall off well, it's not, I'm, the, I'm the youngest. Hmm. It doesn't always fall. So, yeah, but like I'm yeah, saying, it's falls on whoever, the most responsible whoever one. need to know what it is, right? It's need the to most know who it is, one. regardless mm-hmm. of if it's you or not. Somebody needs to be able to handle something right. when it go down. But by and by the same token, that's when and if illness comes about. Mm-hmm. Know where everything is yep. prior to that. If you have a situation where you still need to quote unquote help out. Mm-hmm. your parents that mm-hmm. can be tough right. but that's not your responsibility either nope and seek out whatever resources are available to them right 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 i'll right. help you i'll take you over here to go sign up for this that, yeah. or the other, but you know mm-hmm. yeah wow but it's real it's real it's, it's real it's ha- we, and it's, and, 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 go and it's gonna that. happen so yeah, you know yeah. it's gonna happen so it's a lot to think about and like when you guys we're talking about all of this stuff and then you guys have your own set of stuff you're dealing with now so you just because we've been there We've been right. through that part. Now we're at this part. It's it's, it's going to keep yeah. going. I have a long-term care policy so that if something happens and I need to be in long-term care, I have that. As I said earlier, I have a um, long-term disability policy. Yeah. These are all separate policies. I have other investments that I'm in and whatnot. Take care of your money and have your house in order. And you get that in order early. And start, you know, and and start investing in things and whatnot early. Now is a perfect time in your 30s. Now is a perfect time. You still think about it. 
there is no retiring at 62. That is not real. We're all going to be working probably till about 70. So in your Mm -hmm. 30s, you still got another 40 good years that you're going to be working, whether it's for someone else or even in your own entrepreneurial, you know, pursuits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're still going to be working for at least another 40 years. You do have time, but you ain't got a whole lot of time. And it goes by because very it fast. goes by like that. I mean, thirty fifth out here, like yo, right? That's what I'm saying, fifty two. What? Oh. I'm like, I'm not ready, and I'm I'm great starting. I even in. was offered um, a cancer policy at my job, and I took it. it mm. Yeah, it's cheap. And what I, you know, once I did my research, they will pay for. God forbid I get married again, and God forbid I get cancer. God, please don't ever let that happen, because I'm always worried about that. But it will even pay for my husband, my friend, my caretaker, whoever, to park at the hospital mm. so that they don't have to come out there. Po- right. You know what That's I mean? A lot. Yeah. Because this, the, the man who sold me the policy said his wife got ill very suddenly, mm-hmm. and she spent so much time at the hospital. But because of this policy, he was able to do all these things. He said, and he didn't even have to think about it. He said where she was located, he had to pay like $15 in tolls each way. Mm. Now, you think that ain't mm-hmm. nothing, but when you're doing that every day yeah. on top of trying to care for somebody mm-hmm. who's ill and dealing with the doctors and... And maintain the household. Right. And maintain the household. So there's things that are offered to you that people really need to think about, especially insurance-wise. Mm-hmm. Yes, we pay a lot of money for insurances that we never use, but all it takes is that one right. time. Right. Mm-hmm. Like really Friday, Friday was National Mammography Day, right? You mm-hmm. know, we had a pink out at work. So, you know, a lot of people are like, why are you wearing pink? I had a hot pink jacket on, too. But I was like, I'm going to wear this thing today. <laughs> you understand me? Because Keita and I work for the same, you know, big company uh-huh. or whatever. So, um, it's just like, my doctor was like, you should go because it runs in your family. I'm like, now at 30? Mm-hmm. Go. I got my first colonoscopy before I was 50. Mm-hmm. And I'm actually due now. I have to go back. I have to make that appointment. So yeah. They have actually, they have um, ones that you can do from home now that you send it in. Right, yeah. Oh, that little commercial they have? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You but that's that another too. thing. We, it's nothing about knowing your family history and right. different yeah. things like that because it's real, you know. And I, I'm, a big, I, I'm a big believer in so many things that happen to us medi- um, physically or is from the environment, mm-hmm. oh, yes. the water, mm-hmm. the food, mm-hmm. all of that. It's not like it was then. So mm-hmm. if you already have that history in your family, I'm always thinking, and all this bullshit we ingesting and inhaling ain't going to help it. So know your history and stay on top of it. You and know, exercise. I'm exercise. not. I need a exercise. buddy. I need a buddy. Walk. Just start walking. Just I walk start every walking. day. Does that count? No, right now. 15 minutes? Because no. I, I, yeah. um, I was telling someone, because I kept telling because I work with quite a few people that have like high high blood pressure, right? And I kept telling them, I was like, listen, I said, you may not want, I said, you don't have to take my word for it, but I guarantee you, if you just change your eating up for like two weeks, I promise you're going to see a major difference. It was like, I ain't doing that. Da, 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 da. So like, no, I remember, I remember watching Will's, um, the Red Table Talk and Will Smith had the whole family emergency meeting. And he was talking about how they was traveling and, you know, him drinking and eating. He came home and he wanted to do a detox. And he said he did the detox, but he was feeling weak. He was feeling fainted a little bit. And then he remembered he was taking his high blood pressure medicine. So he said he took himself off the high blood, high blood pressure medicine and it stabilized him. And I'm like, duh, if y'all just change your eating up, you won't have to worry about nothing. Like, Black folks really don't need to be on high blood pressure medicine like that. Like, come That's on. That's part of what killed my mother was her many, many years of being on high blood pressure medicine and what it did to the rest of her body. And my mother is experiencing that right now. Mm. Right now. She, uh, two years ago, she was in the hospital for something. She's had high blood pressure since before I was born. Right. And they were trying to do a, she was complaining about a pain in her back or something. And they were trying to do a scan and they couldn't find like one of her kidneys because it has shrunken so much due to the blood flow oh my goodness. from, you know, her having high blood pressure get into her kidney. So she's kind of functioning with one kidney. Mm-hmm. And, but it's a direct mm-hmm. result of that. But, you know, yeah. you, they, they, they ate differently. They didn't exercise. Mm-hmm. We, you know, we have that, we, they have that mindset of, uh, oh, whatever, you know, 
You look, can't do that. I try to tell my dad now. He's like, no, nah, you better get me. My family, we had soul food. That's how he thought. You know, I, I'm making some ham. I'm making all that. And I said, all that stuff is the problem. Yep. You know, you add in all that stuff. Like, you need to tell You eat like white people. What does that mean? Healthy people, hey, white? But now the medical industry, because yeah. black folks are now transitioning to vegan food, they are going, they're going crazy because they're like, wait a minute, black folks is eating vegan now? We no doing more something, fried chicken? something wrong. We can't get that money no more. Like, what's, right. what's, what's really going on exactly. now? Mm-hmm. We're reverting yeah. back. That's it. And mm-hmm. it's nothing wrong with doing a cleanse. Everybody needs a cleanse sometimes because, like I said, just the air you breathe, the water you drink, yeah. you need to cleanse your body. I want to do one, but I don't Those know. toxins and metals. Donna right? got me doing wheatgrass shots. Wheatgrass shots, black I- seed. Black seed oil. That's that her. part. Okay. That part. I like black seed oil. I like to put it in my tea. Yeah. I got. I, I take mine straight up. Me too. I do too. I, I, I got. I, I got that. Um. I got Irish sea moss and I got bladder rack. There you go. Bladder who? Bladder rack. Bladder rack. Bladder what? Doctor That's the Doctor Savy's go to. <laughs> Yeah, so she's I, one over there. Dr. Sabi also said that women didn't need to have a period, but I believe, you know what? You take everything with a grain, grain of salt. salt yeah. You take the, there's some but, things we can yeah. and other things. But I, I will say, I, I've talked to some people in the past, and they said when they were like vegan, vegan, they didn't have a cycle. That's not normal. Yeah, I don't believe the woman, that. A woman is supposed to have a cycle every month. How how were we supposed to reproduce? Like, I don't know. She, I don't know if, she, if her cycle was like a day or one or two days, and that was yeah, it. Yeah, that that's that. Yeah, that's not normal. Women are supposed to have a cycle. It's supposed to be, it, it, and everyone's cycle is different. Yeah, but you're supposed to have a cycle until you go through menopause. Hmm. Yeah, child. Talk about that. Oh, you want to talk about menopause? Talk about that. My, mine is so mine is so uh, uh, off because I'm on. I have birth control, and it's like one month. One month is is not here, and then the next month, yeah, it's gonna be. Then you're on the wrong blood pressure. I mean, you're on the wrong birth control medicine because I was on birth control for years, and I never had that problem. No, but I I, I didn't have the on and off, but it would come, it would come every month, but it kind of came when it wanted to. Like there's some people who could take it every day. And then on that one week where it's supposed to come, it comes. And I was never I like that. I can tell you what hour of the day it's going to come. See, there's a lot of people like that. I don't yeah. think blood um, birth control ever really, I mean, it just works, thank God. <laughs> but it wasn't something that I think my body processed well. Mm-hmm. And I did way better after I, I had, kicked it. Years ago, I had a friend who did that, um, God, what was it? Um, the Nuva Ring? Yeah, or something like that. And had a lot of problems. And they and the deal was is that all the trials were done on white women. That's they the were never done on black women. See, that's a, the studies don't really carry. Like, it, yeah. you have to, you don't know if they did a full, yeah. you know, on everybody or what. But it, but that's the I, same. That that the same goes with blood pressure medicine. And let me just say this: uh-huh. I will never go vegan. I'm not vegan. I have no plans on ever going vegan. I do eat pork every now and then. Mm. Okay, I'm healthy. Mm-hmm. I'm not on I'm high blood pressure, diabetes, and what strokes run in my family. And every time I go to the doctor, she's just like, you're doing great. You're doing great. Whatever it is. It's the exercise. It's the, mm-hmm. I go at five in the morning. Miss B, B here could have a Ow. body if she went at five in the morning. Yes. But you go to a different gym now. Don't you go to 24? So then change your membership. Change your membership. How much more? I don't. You better check your, look, Miss B, you better check your job. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Do they have a gym there? Yeah, no, no. I'm talking about, I'm talking about the membership stuff. Yeah, it's still it's high, but I mean, I, it's I, in the I building. Take, it's I downstairs. tell you about that. I tell you about that later. <laughs> okay, there you go. But you I got up at five in the morning, at least at a minimum three days a week, mm-hmm. and three three mornings a week during the week. And I always try to get there at least once on the weekend. Um, that five a.m. thing. I'm like, how? It's it. You get it's used not, to it's it. Not it's when not easy. It's not easy. When I do easy, go in the morning, I go like five. One day I couldn't sleep. Remember that time I couldn't sleep? I was at the gym at four fifteen in the morning. Whew. I was even surprised at myself. I was like, well, where everybody at? But mm-hmm. yeah, you was there. And that's another thing. Like if you can't sleep, but I always sleep so much better when I'm starting that regimen. You know, when when you get into that routine, you sleep better. You think it is true when they say you're clearer. You know yeah, what I mean? And that's just, what I'm missing. Yeah, but that's how I, that's how 
that's how I get when I change up my eating. Like if I go like a month without eating meat, I may eat like fish or right. shrimp mm-hmm. or something. But if I eat like that, like my head is clear. Yeah. Like everything is just like, okay, I'm not foggy anymore. I'm good. Mm-hmm. And you but feel so- lighter. You just yeah. feel better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whenever I'm not exercising regularly, yeah. That, and I don't eat, I don't eat a lot of red meat. I eat red meat once a month, maybe. Sometimes I can go two, three months without eating any. And it's not purpose on purpose, but I just mm-hmm. haven't yeah. eaten any. Um, I don't, um, I, when I re- exercise regularly and keep it up and, and feel my body getting stronger, I just feel so much better. Mm-hmm. And we have a thing with our class, um, our, our, our college class, where we've actually one of our classmates is um, head of emergency medicine Ooh. at uh, the emergency room at um, Howard University Medical Center. Mm. He's the he's our classmate, and he started this thing where, all right, classmates, we you know we need to be mindful of this, this, and this. And he started this whole thing where we got into teams. People started walking. We had um, fighting they, over how many steps I got ahead. in. Oh, oh, the competition got ugly. The guys even put, the guys even had this thing where they call it team, team shirtless. shirtless. They get we was like y'all need to do a calendar so you know they getting ready to try they're to get. They're trying to do a calendar but now. I have seen like Arden lost a lot of oh weight. God. Yeah, he looks really good. Yeah, Scott's been losing weight. I mean, they have really been They've stepping really their game been, up. Yeah. Do they have kids or nephews? Yes. yes. In their thirties, yeah. oh, well, I don't know about that. Oh. But and uh, one of our classmates came up to us at the Hampton Ladies Luncheon, talking about how she was able to get off her diabetes medication. Yeah, her, she was able to get off her diabetes medication mm-hmm. because of the constant walking and all that. All you got to do is walk. Mm. I that, that's my favorite thing to do. Like on a Sunday, if I don't go to church, is I like to get up and just walk around my neighborhood because I like looking at houses. I like mm-hmm. looking at. I just like right. looking at how, and it's I can me. walk around and look at house, and I, next thing I know, it's an hour, 90 minutes later, and I've walked around, and, you know. Well, call me, because she's 10 minutes, not even walking. So. Oh, yeah, less than 10 minutes. No, yeah. not 10 minutes. Nope, three. Yeah, Donald, like, wait, we drove here? Oh, Why? No, you're not. <laughs> Are y'all that close? Yes. Yeah, we live that close. Yeah, driving so is funny. two. Girl, well, I guess, I, look, I guess when I do make it to Jersey, girl, I can't, we got to meet up. Yeah, yes, definitely. It's definitely. like it, and you're there. Yeah, she's like she lives right here. I was like right here. And like, it's so funny because like I met her this year, and you've been living here for how long? Since '02, I moved up here in '02. And yeah. I seen her because I don't know what it is like when you see a car or you buy a new car and you'll see that same car everywhere. It's weird. I seen her on the street. I'm like, no, nah, she that's not hers. No, she don't live in Jersey. She lives in the city because I thought you lived in the city too. And she thought you did too. I thought right. you lived in Queens. Yeah, she was like, I just knew she lived in Queens. And I'm riding, right, I'm like, No, nah, no, nah, I'm I'm tripping. <laughs> then that I think the two days later she was on the bus. I was like I was walking what? up to the bus line because the bus had come. Right. And all of a sudden I hear Leslie. <laughs> and I was like and I was like what the hell are you doing here? Right, and you know you can't say these, but I was like, I'm gonna put that bag right, right here. here. Like, nah, I was like, no, we gonna talk. We talk the entire way. We know there's bus etiquette, but that time we did not care. Right, so we are gonna have this conversation. I was like, what are you doing here? She goes, I lit, and it turns out we've been getting off at the same bus stop. Oh god, and it's like different times. Like, you know, she's oh. later than I do, so it's like I'll miss her. But when I'm running late, she know I'm late. She's like, oh, oh you, you late. late. <laughs> Late today. You know I'm late when I yeah because normally I'm supposed to take the bus over here but I end up running to the bus I'm always running she's, with the bus she lives in a location that it's easy for her to get to the bus from one from two at two different stops she yeah. can literally get to the bus in two minutes yeah if that yep. one in one minute one in two I'm minutes. still zipping up stuff putting Man, stuff on I'm, I'm hoping it from around the corner for yeah. less than ten minutes but I'm hoping it mm-hmm. my last place was like that right in front of the building. So it's like yeah, it's kind of yeah, it kind of works out, but so, sometimes the building ain't that. So right. no, so no excuses. Get out and walk. And no, I'm, I'm I'm gonna try tomorrow. Like I really want to try this 5 a.m. thing. I, I really need to get to the gym. It's, like, it's I not started a shortly after my father passed. Mm-hmm. Um, it just kind of his passing kind of like woke something up in me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I and and I know the things that have killed my parents, and I'm like I don't want that to be your story, my yeah. story. Mm-hmm. Let it be something else. Right, right. I don't want that to be my story. Yeah, I I know I definitely need to, I need to start exercising. 
Like, I don't like the gym. A lot of people don't like the gym. Like, it's like can I twerk? Can I, you know, can I do something? I'd rather dance. Now, I, 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 I was taking a dance class. That's but that gets crazy. Last year. After a while. But they canceled the class, and I really like the class. And they, do you I, like I, roller skating? Ooh. I used to, but okay, so this, okay, so I, I'm going to admit this because I thought about this yet last night, okay? You see, I'm looking at you. <laughs> so. so when Miss B was asking me to go roller skating, I was like, no, I don't want to. I gained too much weight. I don't want to do it. Like, but she won't tell me that. I was like, I, I don't. I thought about it last night. And then now I'm like, oh, girl, you don't lost my hat. You can go roller skating now. now. So now I might be willing to go roller skating again. Like, I okay, used to roller skate week. all the time. Well, Leslie, you think that's good exercise, you say? It's excellent exercise. Yeah. yeah. Them legs core. get the burning. For your core. Hey. I can't roller skate. Roller which, blade, yes. I can't. I can't. Oh, do I can't it. do no blading. I, I'm. I'm. If you sore. can blade, you can. If you can roller skate, you can blade. No, I, don't don't roller skate. I used to. I used to. I'm, I'm not good. I'm not. I, good I haven't been on roller skate branch, in forever, but Branch, I'll do Brook, it. Park, no. Branch Brook Park in Ooh. North is still rocking and yeah. rolling. Let's oh, I need go. to try that. And I'm they ready. play house music. I'm here I for that. Try that. Call mm-hmm. me. Don't leave me because if I see you on your Instagram, I'll be. I definitely want to do that. Look, let's yeah. put it in, let's put it on the So I, I, I thought about, I thought about it. I was like, I'm, I think I'm gonna try to go roller, roller skating again because yeah. it, like I said, like I lost, like I lost some weight. So how'd you do it? What did you do? Change my eating. Okay. Good. And that's it. But I ain't exercised that one time. Yeah. But now you're ready for the next level. It's right. the right. exercise. Mm-hmm. Right. One of our classmates did that too. Um, Susie. She changed her diet and then she really got into the weights and she looks just freaking fantastic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she looks amazing. That She is like my goals person now. Yeah. She's like seriously my goals person because she, because I love free weights. I love lifting weights. So do I. I, like I don't much love the machines than... as much, but I really love weights. And I said, after all of this renovation stuff is, and whatnot is done, I'm thinking about getting a, um, a trainer again. Cause I've been with trainers in the past and they always get you, they always get you where you need to be. Mm-hmm. And then you get there and you're good. And then you kind of fall off a little bit. And then... That's what I'm like. Debating. There's a class. Um, I used to, well, I can't remember what gym it was in North Carolina. I went to, but they had the less mills workouts. That's what 24 hours does. Body mm-hmm. pump. Yes. Body pump. That is the class, honey. Cause it does get your cardio up, but it was with weights. I the body love pump class. that class. You'd be sore. See, I'd rather, I'd rather lift weights than do cardio, which I know yeah. is bad. I know yeah, it's you bad. You got to get the heart moving. To me, cardio is so easy. It is. Like, jump rope. You can do jump rope jump for rope 10, is like, amazing. minutes. That's it. I, I, I like to lift weights. I don't know why. I'd rather go boom, boom, boom. Well, just twerk for 15 minutes. How about that? But that's, that's, why, that's why before, in the past, I used to walk to the gym and then mm-hmm. lift weights. Right. Or I'll, or I'll go swim and then right. lift weights. Oh, Bravo. Can but we this, get more people that are doing that? The best I don't know how class I ever had was I had a water aerobics class. I had it three times a week. Mm-hmm. And honey, a black woman taught it too. Yeah. And she had us in there and we weren't doing anything strenuous by mm-hmm. any stretch. But when you went to bed that night, <laughs> you were tired, honey. What? You wanted to eat you something, maybe if you could. <laughs> and you said. Yeah. Have you that, tried? I do yoga too. Have you tried yoga? I can't do yoga. I did say I want to try yoga because I want to work out my flexibility and, and my core and all that good stuff. So I do yeah. want to try yoga because I, I like to meditate. Like, be quiet. I was like, how? I know. I'll be like this. When they be, I'll be like this. What what? They doing? I'm looking around. <laughs> I'm like, I know. I'm always like, <laughs> one hour and like, <laughs> that's meditation. That doesn't go on in yoga class. Right. Or you could try Pilates. Pilates is very good too. Mm-hmm. Like, look, somebody got so comfortable in yoga class that they passed gas. They was like, I was really relaxed. I was like, you know what? I hate to class. started snoring. I was like, what you doing? <laughs> she was like, oh, sorry. I was like, like you know, I've done that do. at a massage where I got massaged so well, I like snored. <laughs> And that's what I really need, to be honest with you. Yeah. Be quiet, Miss B. I really need a massage because no, I am, I'm gonna run that. Like you I, need I, that monthly. Because this month right here, this monthly. right here is very is very tense. Like yeah, I'm not trying to hear this too. For her birthday, I bought her a pass to massage, and she didn't use it. I gave it to her in April. It expired in September. I asked her every week. The day before, a week before, two days before, hours before. You going? <laughs> you did. Oh, I forgot. I know. I asked 
text you every day and the excess, so you just gonna let my money go to the side. Huh? I didn't mean to do that. You had a whole. How you should have gone that? in there and been like, "This expired. This I expired. To, right. I had X, Y, and Z going on. Can I please, please? It was paid for. Can I please use? And they would have let you use it. It was a black lady too. Oh, shame. So she was happy to get that free. Oh, but I ain't buying her no more gifts. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> you have been forgiven, but you know when you said don't say nothing, I was like, okay, I got run it. <laughs> Sisters. Mm-hmm. But like any closing, because I know you guys have a hard stop. Any closing things you want to say from fifty to thirty? Enjoy it, but just be smart about it. Yeah, you know, do your thing, but always keep in mind what you got to do. Mm-hmm. And don't you know? Don't let the naysayers and the dream cat, uh, dream snatchers, steal your joy. Do you? But just be smart about your moves. Yeah. And learn from your mistakes. That's all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Be strategic it's, about that. Right. And yeah. surround yourself with positive people doing positive things. And don't be afraid to ask. Like, how did you do X, Y, and Z? Okay. Like, how did you get there? And one thing, Leslie and I are both very bad at. And I think a lot of women, probably our age, are you know, ask for help when you need it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, ask for help when you need Because, you know, I'll be choking on a chicken bone before I say, do you think you could get me something? Right? Don't do that. Don't That's do that. That's me all ask, day. Ask for help when you need it. Do you feel like you don't ask for help because you feel like, you know, you've been doing it by yourself for so long. It's just like, you know what? I got it. Well, I make up stories in my head. Oh, they're too busy. Oh, they've got this going <laughs> she on. She always says that. <laughs> That's what I was it's like. a story. People make up, you know, and, and, and understand and recognize in yourself, when I was saying earlier, know how you occur to other people. Mm. If you find yourself in a place, find out if you're, figure out if you're living a story that you like living right. in, because the story works for you. Right. It does not benefit you, but in some way it works for you. That's your story. You got to give up your story. Right. Mm, you right. gotta you really gotta if you want to get to the next level you gotta give up your story y'all look, and we all got one and live in reality yeah because because i was listening to when y'all said something about because you, we come off as the strong when nobody really wants to help or when y'all was like oh um they always helping this this type of girl out but they they see me i'm strong they ain't gonna help me out so it's like how do you stop how do yeah. you stop that like well, first of all, they think you're strong because you don't ask for help. You know, I mean, if they if they look at you as someone who's strong, you never ask for help. And I know that's how people see me, and it's very hard for me to ask for help. Now, you need me to help you, I'm going to do what I can. And, and see, that's the other thing. People who don't like to ask for help are willing to help others. So they you give off that persona that you're mm. strong. Mm. That's and the same reason people come to you for money. Right. But mm. And it's not that you're not strong. It's that you need as well as the next person so you know and that's something i struggle with every day so that means i gotta act like a damsel in distress sometimes i don't know how to do that you know you don't no, you just need to say no. listen i'm just i'm going through this i could really use your help you just say it as an adult i could really use your help with this if you can that's it yeah. but again i'm saying that here i don't generally yeah you know call my friends and be like listen usually i'm like <gasps> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah like and then they're like, okay, well, why didn't you tell me? And then you're right. sitting there with the dramatics. Donna did that to me the other day. <laughs> She's like, well, did you ask for help? No. Right. She goes, no, why would I have done that? She was in one. And I was just like, did you ask for help? She goes, no, why would I have done that? And see, and then she was like, no, I didn't ask for help. And she knew right away. Yeah, because like you said, renovation, I was like, man, I did not like. It didn't hit me because I guess I was going through on my own. We never, my we never want to be perceived as weak. See? Like I know my thing is I don't like to be judged. I don't. Mm-hmm. I try not to judge, so I don't want people judging me. Like, oh, what? Why she? Yeah. But guess what? They're probably judging me anyway because life. That's what happens. And mm-hmm. does it matter? Society. If mm-hmm. I need something and they're going to judge me for it, so be it. If they're going to help me. It, yep. it, it, it's part of what it is you know what i mean so we have to get beyond that mm-hmm. we have to get beyond that in, of ourselves yeah because mm-hmm. i even stop out I, I did that before i had asked for help and then that same person went to somebody else and was like well she she got to get her stuff together and i stopped asking and you at the time me? no i never asked you anyway <laughs> 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 you know 
know what it is? It's, uh, she hears what I'm going through and everybody's pulling on me. It's not even just one person. It's like five to ten people on a regular who reach out. And I'm, I'm the best friend and I don't even ask for stuff right. that everybody be. I'm like, yo, what in right. the heck is going on? And it's right. like, I know she'd be feeling because I'd be wanting to just cry because I'm like, yo, what is you it on my face? There's some things, like, there's some calls you need to stop taking, some emails and some texts you need yeah. to stop I've been returning. ignoring lately. And, and it's going to be like, like, no. Like, the mm-hmm. answer is no. Yeah. And don't give me your whole song and dance because the answer is hell no. And you and then you need to just like become that person in the family that knows like, don't ask that one. You know, yeah. That's how I want to be at. Yeah. Like yeah. when I say no, it's like why? Mm-hmm. You know, they'd be like, well, she knows because I got said it. so. Yeah, you know, they so what's like, what's your she knows she got it, and I know I'm gonna keep it. Yeah, right. that's the line too. But when you say no, and they're like, why? What are you saying? Because I'm going on a trip. Mm-hmm. No, but you, you know, and then the thing is, why? Like, I just got a car because because, because why? Yeah, not, but you I don't, don't, I don't have explain, to explain no to you. I don't have to explain anything to you. You don't get up and go to my job every right. day. You don't no. pay the rent in my house. I owe you no explanation. No. Just the fact that we're blood related means nothing. Like, That's your, mama, the thing they try to run like your mama used to say, because I said so. Right. You, you know? No. She ain't never give me no explanation because I said so. But no. Say it again. Because I said so. Because I said so. But you my mama said, used to do that. Stop asking me. Go to the store and ask me again. And look, ask, right? me one, ask me one more time. <laughs> one more, I'm one more again. Up yeah, one one more ask time. me again. No. Ask me again. My mom gave us that face, and I was like, "Yeah, there was just a look." I remember when my goddaughter was very young. I had her in the store with me, and she said, "God, mommy, can I?" I looked at her and I said, "No." And the woman behind me said, "Wow, she takes no very." Very, she took that very well. I said, "Cause no means no." The mm. hell, she ain't got no job. She ain't got a job. <laughs> If she want to fall down here and act like a fool, she better. Come on, you write it And then I'm going right to whip out. that ass. Right, right. Walk you ain't even going to make it to the car. I'm going to get that leg. Okay. Walk right like that leg out. Up. Light you up. But yeah, you just have to, you don't owe anybody any explanation. Hmm. So, why do you, so why do you feel like some people, I'm going to say me, mm-hmm. give the explanation? What do you mean? Like, why, why, oh, oh, you will give an explanation yeah. because you feel guilty about it, right. and that's why. Why, why? Yeah, why? Because for some reason you don't want to be perceived as hurting somebody or being bad, right? Or there being bad. Screw that. There you go. Fuck them. There you go. I told her that yesterday. Fuck, Fuck them, them fools. I didn't do that today, okay? Yeah, no. I know that, but I'm just saying. You can't think of, because they ain't thinking about what the hell you got going on. So but that hasn't know. been a big thing. Remember the last time I think I had to deal with this when I told you on the bus? Mm-hmm. You know, so I haven't had to deal with that lately, but I just wanted to like. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The no. thing now is just all me. You know, it's like me having my mind, like that chatter going on. I'm trying to shut But back. I told her yesterday, maybe she just got to, I said Maybe you need to deal with whatever it is that, that it's keep coming up. You got to deal with it so it can it can, mm-hmm. it can leave. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't deal with it, it's gonna keep coming up and keep coming up. So mm-hmm. you just gonna have to break it down, analyze or what's you happening. Could, yeah. Or you could <laughs> you could do like somebody did. Um, remember when Jacquette was on our show mm-hmm. and she said she had a um, client of hers mm-hmm. who. Um, was like the first to make it, if you will, in the family and had constantly had family coming to him. And when she started working with him and he, you know, kind of explained all the money that he was outlaying to family members, she said, this has got to stop. Mm-hmm. So they devised a plan where there was a pot of money that he established and he said, once this pot is gone, oh, you told me that's that. it. Yes, you did that is that. it. Now I'm not suggesting you, right have to do that but just say sometimes you maybe need to remind somebody do you know how many times over the past two years you've come to me for money and this is how much money I have lent you and yet here you are once again again, on my phone line on my text message asking me for money again and you didn't bring nothing back you and you have paid me back nothing the well has dried up you don't like what I'm saying to you, but you're going to have to accept what I am saying to you. I have over the past two years, three years, if you can think in your mind how many times that you've come, that just in the last two years that yeah. you've come to me for money, the well has run dry. I suggest you figure out a better way to handle your money. 
If you need some resources, I can certainly point you in the direction of our public library that has lots of information about financial <laughs> literacy. <laughs> and it is free. And I'm sitting here thinking that's way too much conversation. No. Sorry, but I just you. say, you've come to me for money, and this is how much I've lent you over the last two years. Yeah. And you've, you've paid me back not one thin dime, nor have you ever even intimated that you would pay me back. So you seem to think I'm a bottom, bottomless well. The well has run dry. That's good. Just no, you can't. No. And, when, and, and I'm now going on this vacation. I love to rub a vacation in their face. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to go book this vacation, and I'm going and see you on social media. See, all this takes me out because when but I'm then but then the same ones to be asking you for money be the same ones going on trips. What? Right. Exactly. You won't, you won't, you won't go on a trip with my money in your pocket. Hmm. See, you but when, when I go through all that stuff, I stop having fun. So you'll see me unplugged. You won't see me at events. I'll be in the house. No. Call Life Leslie. She live around the damn pool. I know. You're right. Call Leslie. That one day, what, 4th of July when she called me, I was on the couch late out like, hmm. I was like, you want to go to a party? I was like, I got nowhere to go. I was like, this look kind of cute, though. But I was like, dang, I got, I got the ugly twist in, the silly twist right now. But you know what? It's, it's and it, was, it went to the party. It wasn't, I mean, it wasn't even all that. It was, it was, we had fun. But we had a good time. That's it. Met that guy who turned out to have a wife. Mm. Go ahead. That's a whole nother That's story. a whole date in Chronicles. <laughs> And the Shoot. bullshit. And Would y'all like to come back for that? <laughs> we could do that. Girl, uh, <laughs> Oh, well, my but we have to go because we have to uh, uh, tape our own yeah. show. A different 50 podcast. Yes, yes. friends. Please listen, listen. Listen, Please listen in. Listen in. Listen in. This was fun. This was, this fun. was fun. Thank you for having us. Yeah. yeah. Thank we you really guys for coming. It. And when you come to Jersey, hey, hey, yeah, we hey. got to connect. Gonna do it. Let's We're going to go. exercise. Yeah. Go eat. We're going to go have some drinks. We're going to party. Go have some adult beverages. Go have some drinks. We're going to party. We go Don't twerk. Y'all <laughs> good for a quick, a quick twerk section. All right. <laughs> look, look at her. She, <laughs> up. She's ready. She having She's a good ready. day today. I'm yep, happy. Yep. She's ready. I'm and proud. Then, and then we're going to do some mop telling your families no. Okay. Right? We're going right. to do that. While we drinking, we're going to do that part. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what it's going to work for me. I That's gave right. you the script. Be you like, did. I have given you X amount of money. No, nigga, no. Peter, Peter, ask me for money in three days and see if just and see it. what happens. Like, come up with a story and all that. I just need to, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I'll play that game. Okay. I, I need to. I need to get it together. And we're gonna do that. We're gonna pop bottles while we tell them. Right. Yes. We're gonna practice that. That's we're gonna bring it. you out right. to Harlem world. Go up to Harlem. Look. Then she's going to be drunk all the time, waiting right. for somebody to ask her. What? Right, right, no. right. <laughs> Hell no. You can't get nobody from me. No. Get the step. Hell to the no, no, no. Uh-uh. No, it's not be like, on. It's no. I, I tell you no all the time, but I can't stop drinking. I'm telling you. Look, it's going to be a thing. I'm going to be like, my mind going to be like this. Right? And, <laughs> and, 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 no. Yes. We really appreciate you, Leslie. We really appreciate you, Donna, for coming you. on. Thank you for having us. us. You know, like great I'm, meeting you, Miss Cheetah. Yes. Nice meeting you guys. That's okay. Next I don't time. drink Next coffee, time. so it doesn't. Matter. I don't have a coffee machine. I'm going to get some red snacks. I got you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and get. Look, if I have to go get it for you, I'm gonna go get it. But yeah, y'all know where to find us. You know, all streams. Uh, YouTube is where you're gonna be able to view this. You understand? Yes. We on all social media platforms. The Four One Five Pod. You want to shoot us an email? You already know the four one five pod at gmail dot com. Miss B and Keita, we here episode seventy six, which is girls a different fifty. Yeah, don't crack. What's it called? A different fifty podcast. What? And you can find us on Facebook, Spotify. Uh, where else? Apple Podcasts, <laughs> Google Play. Yes, I, 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 like draw, I drew a blank. I drew a blank. Yeah, we Twitter. Everywhere. We're even on Twitter. Yes. SoundCloud, mm -hmm. MixCloud. We're on it. All the clouds. Just yes. go get it. Yes. Like what? Mary Mary said, go get it. There you go. Go get it. Go get it. Go get your uh, blessing. And it's Sunday. We're going to leave y'all with that. But again, it's the, it's the 415 podcast. with girls, Miss B and Keita. 30 Bye. meet 50. Bye. And we out. Yes.